Um, my name is Rihama Puras. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Purdue University. And today I'll be presenting iSpellen, uh, disclosing sensitive user information by mobile magnetometer from finger touches. So uh, tracking users' activity on smartphones has been a great concern for different entities. So we use our phones for a daily basis for different applications, such as um, texting, um, chatting, um, browsing, and even with health tracking and finance applications. So these applications collect user data and um, share this data with other entities, such as data brokers. And data brokers further sell the data to advertisers, which use this data to target users with targeted and personalized ads. Due to this, uh, this has raised a lot of concerns from users uh, due to the privacy of their data being shared with different entities. And to, go, to address these concerns, um, Mobile OS has introduced permissions to protect users' privacy by, uh, for example, asking users' consent before they can uh, share their data uh, for tracking. So um, despite that, we found that previous works um, showed that different sensors can be used for side channel attacks to infer private data, such as the touch events of users and also the application's usage. For example, motion sensors such as um, accelerometer and gyroscope can infer the keystrokes of users when they use the phone in hand and um, move the phone while they are typing. Uh, also, uh, the processor electromagnetic effect can be used to infer the activity of the user on, the, on their phone. And also, um, the LED displays have a magnetic effect due to the different colors of different applications, which can be used to infer the application the user is using. However, uh, these side channels either require a large range of motion, such as the case of motion sensors. Uh, they do not work when uh, the phone is stationary and uh, they are sensitive to background activity and also to changes in the screen color and UI changes. So um, in this work, we investigated the smartphones touchscreens and we found that most of, smart, of smartphones use capacitive touchscreens. So the capacitive touch screens is uh, made of um, different layers. Among these layers, there are two conductive layers. And whenever the user touches the screen, there is a capacitive change that occurs between these two conductive layers. Due to um, this capacitive change, there is an induced current between um, these layers at the spot of the touch. And according to Ampere's law, there is a magnetic effect that arises from this uh, electric current. So we found that um, on the magnetometer, whenever the user touches the screen, there is a spike in the magnetometer signal, which can be used to infer the touch um, uh, of the user on the screen. So another observation we found in this work is that applications have different touch fingerprints. So according to the activity of the application, there are common touch patterns in, for different applications, and these uh, touch patterns are often unique or repetitive. So for example, uh, if a user is using a browser, they first type something to search for, and then they start browsing, doing some swipes, and then they start reading. For example, for a music app, um, a user first browses for different music tracks, and then uh, like stays idle for a um, long time for listening and then occasionally changes the volume. For a chatting app, the user performs a lot of uh, touches to type a message and then stays idle and then types another message and so on. So we introduced a iStellen, a novel site channel attack. Uh, and in this attack, uh, a user is normally using um, an app in the foreground and then the user previously uh, installed the malicious app of iStellen. And this app is working in the background and collects the magnetometer data. This can be a normal app such as a fitness tracking app or a music app, et cetera. The collected data is fed into iStellen's attack. And based on that, iStellen can infer um, the touch intervals of the users, uh, the application categories, and also the touch event types. And from this information, um, can be used for um, launching personalized ads for the users and also launching GUI confusion attacks in which 
the malicious app can show a UI that is similar to the foreground app to fool the user and steal their data. So iStalent system first starts with a data extraction and processing module that filters the data and outputs the 3D filtered magnetometer signal. This data is fed into a binary touch extraction module that converts the 3D signal into a binary signal. So the binary signal is a sequence of zeros or ones where one means that there is a touch and zero means there is no touch. And from this data, uh, we can infer the application type using an application classifier that, application, that, that infers the application category. And also um, a touch type detector can infer the touch uh, event types. So the binary extraction module um, takes the uh, filtered data. Uh, it's segmented into non-overlapping uh, window samples of size 60 seconds. And then this data is um, fed into a CNN LSTM based network that performs sequence mapping, maps the 3D signal into a binary signal. And as mentioned, uh, the one means that there is a touch and zero means there is no touch. The next phase would be the application classifier. This takes the binary touch sequence and encode it into a feature vector of integers that represents the consecutive zeros and ones. So for this, we use a one versus all classifier. So for every app, we build a separate classifier that is based on LSTM. And the prediction is also a binary where one means the app is detected and zero means the app is not detected. The output of these predictions are all uh, integrated into a meta classifier that predicts the application category that has the highest confidence. The last phase is the touch event type detector. And for this, we use a hidden Markov model. So uh, we consider uh, the sequence of observations to be the length of the binary touch events and also the preceding idle times. And the hidden states are um, the touch event types that we want to input. And the touch event types refers to um, the type of the touch, such as a swap or a tap or long press, et cetera. So the goal here is to infer the hidden um, states based on the observations. For that, we model the observation and transition probabilities based on the frequency of touch types, as well as the duration of touch and idle intervals. And because the sequence of touches depends on the activity of the app, we build a different or a separate uh, HMM model for each app category. So to evaluate iStalin, we performed a user study on 22 users, and uh, we used seven app categories from popular apps for this. Um, these include um, board game, browser, music app, chatting app, etc. And we also conducted additional experiments with 14 more apps from the same categories, but different UIs. And also we performed experiments with five new apps from unseen categories that are not seen in the training data. Overall, the average accuracy of iStalin is 90% for the binary extraction, 74% for the application classi classification, and 73% for the touch type detection. To evaluate iStalin's robustness, we performed uh, experiments varying uh, different parameters and different scenarios. So um, for instance, we varied the sampling frequency of the magnetometer sensor, and we found that the accuracy is almost stable with all frequencies. Uh, we also tested with different scenarios, such as when the user is wearing a metal object at a home environment in a hall with people around. And we also found that um, the accuracy is consistent in different scenarios. We tested with more parameters and uh, more scenarios, such as phone positioning and um, when the user um, transforms from one app to another. And all of these uh, details are uh, found in the paper. So to conclude, um, we introduced iStalin, which is a side channel attack that exploits the uh, capacitive uh, smartphone screens to leak sensitive uh, information, such as the uh, touch intervals, the apps usage, and touch event types. And in the, futures, we, in the future, we are focusing on countermeasures, uh, such as sensors, noise injection, malicious app detection, and restrictive methods that restrict uh, the use of sensors in the background for apps. And this is all, thank you. Are there any questions?
Thank you very much for the talk. So there are no questions. Uh, we have a question. We have a question about the training and testing process. Where's the hockey puck? Good. Um, do you split the train and test samples by users or by application? Since each user has possibly a different usage pattern, it's important to train on K users and test on NK different users. Do you understand? Yeah, so for that, Okay, uh, so uh, for the training and testing, we use the um, um, leave one out uh, method uh, in which we separate one user with all of their data and we train on the rest of the users. And uh, we then perform this on every user and take the average. So for the training, the test user is unseen. We consider we do not train and test on the same users. Okay, and then to wrap up with one final question, I'll just ask, um... Okay, uh, how noisy is the magnometer, magnetometer signal? Uh, is it clean enough to consider a future attack looking at the temporal relation between the taps to even estimate what the user is typing by creating a signature of tap events for different words? So basically, can you extract more information from the signal than you're actually extracting? So for now, we were considering the scenarios where the phone is stationary. Uh, so this is more challenging because uh, when the phone moves, uh, this introduces a larger effect on the motion sensors, including the magnetometer. But when the phone is stationary, we found that uh, it's harder than um, it's harder to infer the exact position of the touches and infer more information. But this can be considered in future work with um, like more advanced models, probably, and um, more filtering for the data to infer that such data. Okay, great. Um, one last question, because you seem to have very many here, which is, do you see uh, particular users for which the accuracy would drop? So can you use this to detect who is using the phone, like as an authentication method? Sorry, uh, the, the sound is not very clear. Yeah, sorry. Let me So uh, for that uh, type of attack, we are um, uh, using all of the user's data in order to detect the activity. But for authentication, that would be a different model that is should be trained and tested on um, the same user's data. And to detect the differences between users, we have to build different models for different users. We are considering that in future work as well. Okay, great. Uh, let's thank our speaker one more time.